All right. So, next uh, order of business on our topic in engineering mechanics is something called equilibrium of particles. However, we'll be uh, learning 2D first, and next we'll be learning on 3D. So, what is uh, equilibrium? So, equilibrium is defined if that particle is at rest, meaning it does not have any motion, velocity is equal to zero, or if it's moving at a constant velocity. So, If you're using uh, Newton's second law, summation of force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, acceleration is equal to zero. Why? Because velocity is constant. Right? Since uh, acceleration is equal to V minus V naught over time, no change. Original equals final velocity. So the whole accelerations become zero. So summation of forces will also become zero. So in these two things, uh, whether it is not moving, so this is static case. Uh, static, not moving. Secondly, is moving but constant velocity. So these are the two things where a particle is in equilibrium. So, if we're looking at a lot of axes, x, y, z, the whole thing will be also equivalent to zero. Meaning, uh, if you have a particle here, the forces on the right equals the forces to the left. The forces top equals forces below so the vector sum of all the forces acting on the particle is equals to zero okay so of course you're going to have uh, forces in a lot of direction but then you always resolve them right so you're going to have uh, components okay we'll look at a few examples before we, before we move on and um, solve problems, we need to understand one more thing. That is called free body diagram. So free body diagram is a representation of all the forces which is acting on a body. So you need to represent all the forces acting on a body in a very simple manner that you can solve. If you look here, this is a system. And this, term, this system has uh, a box. And you've got cables connected to another mass. So this one is M1. This one is M2. Apparently, M2 is moving down with an acceleration A2. This one is moving to the left is with an acceleration A1. So this whole thing is uh, connected. When I say connected, mass 1 is connected to mass 2. So they are not yet free. So what you should do is you should free them. So that is what we mean by free body diagram. So you've got uh, this M1 body, this one, this M1, you need to re represent it in such a way that all the forces are represented. So you've got normal force. Hmm kind of tebali a bit now this one uh. normal force is supposed to be this way mg is supposed to go down so this one is slightly wrong 
Yeah, so MG is going down. You've got normal force going this way. And you've got uh, tension going this way. So this one is one free body. And uh, look at this one. This one, you've got tension from the cable. You've got mass. And this one is another body. So both of them are free. This one is also free. Okay. So a few steps that you should do on the body is you need to consider all the active forces of the particles in motion and also all the reactive forces or the reaction force which is the constraint that prevents a motion. So don't worry, we're going to be doing a lot of exercise on this one. So among other things that is uh, available when you're doing free body diagram is some components. One of the components is called spring. So if you have a spring, normally your spring will have an original length. So let's say this is the original length, L0. When you give a force, the spring expands. So it will expand with the distance x. So this is causing it to have uh, forces. If it's in original uh, length, there is no force. Huh? When it is elongated or compressed, it will have force. And the force is directly proportional to the elongation. So typically, you are going to be using the spring equation, which is F is equal to Kx. K is the spring constant. So sometimes you're going to see something like uh, cables and pulleys. So when you have cables and pulleys, you are going to have forces on it. Okay, now this it is being drawn correctly. Lah. Mg is going down. Normal is going up. So a good thing with uh, cables, uh, the cable can really change force direction. For example, when your cable is uh, a line like this, the force direction can be changed. Okay, so your cable can be very complicated. It can be like this. Yeah, it can even be like this. But with the help of a lot of pulleys. Lah. So the good thing about cable is you can have a force here. You can change direction of a force. So this is how you change direction of a force by using cables. So if you have a more complicated system, this is how the free body diagram should look like. So you need to really, really separate. So this is one body. This is another body. So body one. This is body two. Okay, you will be meeting a lot of cables, pulley and springs later on. So let's look at uh, a few more examples. So this is a uh, traffic light with your standard red, orange and green. So this traffic light is being uh, suspended via two cables. Two cables like that. So this cable is not uh, really joined together. So they will have separate tension. If the cable is joined together via a pulley, then a different story already. This is joined together. T1 will be equivalent to T... This one also T1 also. Same. But this one is not, lah, obviously. Probably they design it some sort of like this. 
Uh, so both cables are separated. So tension here is T2, tension here is T1. Separate case. When you are in a pulley, same. This one, same. This one, different. Different tension. This one, same tension. Okay. So, yeah, erased. So, something like this, you need to analyze. So, if you draw a free body diagram, there will be two things. Lah. This one. At this part, you're going to have tension, which is equivalent to T3. So, this is one body. Of course, the body is in equilibrium. Therefore, the forces going up is equivalent to the force going down. Hence, the body is in equilibrium. So, if you are analyzing this uh, traffic light, you'll get a free body diagram like this. This is a free body diagram. Then, you can also analyze at this location, this joint. So, at this location, it's the gateway of a lot of forces meeting with each other. So, you've got uh, T2, you've got T1, and you've got T3. So obviously, this is another free body diagram. This was, this is body one probably. This is another body lah, body two. So if you solve here, you can only get D three. But if you solve at this joint, you can solve for the whole unknown forces. So similarly, look at here. Uh, yeah, look at this. This cable is connected. If it's connected via one single cable, all the tension are similar. Same tension, same tension, same tension. Anywhere along the cable, you will have same tension. Okay, we'll get to this. More examples. Uh, mass 1, mass 2, free body diagram. If you have something which is slanting, you're going to get, uh, this one is actually mg. This one is actually normal. This one is mg cos theta, this one is mg sin theta. Okay, so that was your knowledge, uh, your explanation on a free body diagram. So next, we're going to be solving a few things. A few problems in uh, two-dimensional. So procedure on how to do it, of course. Number one, free body diagram. Next, you use the equilibrium equation. So let's take an uh, arbitrary uh, particle. This is a particle. There are a lot of forces in it. One force is going out. This one is also going out. This one is going in. It's That's fine. This one going in. So remember, all your forces you have to resolve. You can resolve. This one, you can even transfer on, on the other side. You can even transfer. This one definitely need to resolve. So the point is, you need to resolve forces in two dimensional. Okay, let's do one example. So let's read them. Determine the tension in cable BA and BC in order to support 60 kg. So this is 60 kilo. 
So obviously, I can draw the free body diagram of this. So if I draw the free body diagram of that thing, I'm going to get something like this. Lah. Mg T. If it's in equilibrium, summation of force in the y direction is equal to zero. Meaning, uh, what's going up is positive. So T minus mg is equal to zero. T will be equivalent to mg. So then you don't really need to do this one. You know already lah. If this is mg, this tension will definitely be mg. So if you want to draw the free body diagram, you're going to be looking at something like this lah. So this one is the joint which is connecting our cables. This is the joint. So you are doing the equilibrium of this particle B. So you've got here, this is basically Mg. This is tension C. This is tension A with all these uh, gradient angles. So what you do next, okay, this is on at the bottom. You have to do equilibrium of uh, particles. If you are still not very satisfied with this one, you can do another uh, equation. Not equation, uh, another sort of diagram. Uh. So you've got, this is the particle, right? So you've got mg. This TC is actually going to be two component, which is going to be T cos 45 degree. This one will be T sine 45 degree. So that's why you need to be very good in 2D force already. You'll be applying all the things now. On these sides, it's the same thing. You need to resolve all the components. On these sides, look at this. This is the horizontal, right? So this is going to be T. Yeah, you should label properly. Yeah. This is TC. This is TC. This is uh, TA bracket. Let's put the hor hypotenuse first. Hypotenuse is 5. Uh, horizontal component for this one the same. T. Hypotenuse is 5. This is vertical. So vertical you're looking at 3. So this one is 3. So something like this, you can convert to something that you can really understand. Lah. So next thing uh, that you should do is you should do an equilibrium equation. So you start with summation fx is equal to 0. Anything to the right is positive. So what should you be looking at? You should be looking at this one. There you go. All horizontal components only. Don't look at vertical. Just look at the horizontal components. Which is going to be this one. Ah. T, C. Ah. Hmm. T, C, cos 45. It is to the right, so it's positive. This one is to the left. So minus TA 4 over 5. Are we good? This one is equal to 0. Why equal to 0? It is static. It's not moving. So make it proper a bit. 0 0.7071 TC minus 0 0.8 TA. This one is equal to 0. 
So this is our first equation. This is equation 1. So next thing that you should solve is you should solve summation fy is equal to 0. Anything that goes up is actually positive. So the only thing that you should be looking is this one. Lah. Don't look at other things. Just look at vertical components. Yeah, so vertical components. How many components? You've got three. Three components. Uh, start with the top. So you've got TC sine 45 degrees plus T what T is this huh? this is actually TA right yeah this is TA so TA 3 over 5 minus MG lah, is equal to 0 so this one becomes 0 0.7071 Tc plus zero point uh, six k zero point sixty a. Obviously, you can shift this one. Mg you can shift over here. Shift. So you are going to get mg lah. How much is mg? It's actually rapper mg. How many kilo? 60 kilo. This one ah. 60 times 9.81. How much? Is your calculator. Five eight eight point six. So put here. 588.6. And this will be your second equation. Yeah, second equation. Second equation. So obviously, something like this, you can solve using calculator. Don't solve manually. You don't have the time in your final exam. Just solve using calculator. How to do that? You can refer to the last pages of these slides. Yeah, look at your calculator. It's probably something like this. So this is your calculator. This is the newer one, right? So you press mode, mode. I think you have to press uh, two times code. Or maybe three times. Or some calculator you just press once. And make sure you choose something called EQN. So if you press the equation, you will have uh, four options. So you need to choose number one. So number one is when you have two unknowns. You choose number two when you have three unknowns. So this is for three unknowns. Three unknowns. I guess this one is for quadratic. This one is for cubic equation. So something like this will come out. You need to key in properly. Lah. A. This one is A. Eh? This one is B. This one is C. So you have to follow the equations um, guideline. Lah. So the guideline is AX plus BY equals C. So this is the calculator format. C-A-L-C format. So since this is calculator format, 
C, yeah, it has to be this way. So that is why you need to shift. Okay, so punch in your calculator, punch it properly. So X, X, la, Y, Y. So make sure the equations that you are using is correct. So one thing that I make sure when I'm punching my calculator, right? TC dekat depan, TC mesti dekat depan. TA dekat belakang, TA must be at the back. So this one is basically C lah. This one is basically, basically C. So solving using calculator is going to yield you the answer lah. So the answer should be x and y. So x is representing tc. Y is actually representing ta. Ah, find the value. Punch in your calculator properly. So what to key in in your calculator? Key in the values lah. What kind of value? Probably I'm going to have to draw here. I'll draw here. What to punch in your calculator? Hmm... Right, so this is A, this is B, this is equal, this is C. So you got to key in 0 0.7071, negative 0 0.8, 0. Next, 0 0.7071, 0 0.6, and 588.6. Uh, key in something like this. Point eight, point seven zero seven one, point six. So the answer that you're gonna get is four seven five point seven Newton, uh, and the other one is. 420.4 so that is the answer lah. ok you can check 420 and 476 yeah final answer you can uh, adjust to 3 significant number lah. 3 significant number so this one is probably 476 newton this one is actually 420 Newton. Okay, is everybody clear? If you narrow it down to three significant number, that is the answer. Okay, let's do more exercises. This one. Does this look very complicated for you? You might want to try. Yeah, let's skip this one first. Let's do something simpler a bit. Let's jump to this one. We're going to be doing this one. Exercise 1, uh, probably. Okay, so let's uh, take a look. This is a bracket. I think it's called, it's not a bracket, uh, it's called a plate. Something called a gusset plate. So this gusset plate is where every beam is being uh, joined. You merge every single beam here. So they will come to an angle and you will meet at this location O. La. So the whole thing is being joined. Of course, this is uh, from a very big structure. Probably you can see uh, some sort of telecommunication structure antenna 
right your antenna is like this right so this is probably uh, one part of it uh, this point okay can you imagine so something like this so you can analyze it one by one by one uh, and settle all okay let's start the members of a truss are connected to a gusset plate forces are concurrent and O take theta is equal to 90 so this one is 90 degrees but this one is like this huh? 3, 4, 5 let's solve this one first let us settle the angle first 3, 4, 5 what is theta? So theta you can use what uh, tangent uh. Mm. maybe I'll draw small thing uh, small uh. tangent negative one y over x three over four ah this one already got Hiya. no need to penat penat draw eh I've done I've pre prepared for you guys look at this one lah. Uh. Ah, tangent negative 1 3 over 4 Betul ya 3 over 4 Betul lah So At this particular time You cannot be confused already You must be very good with uh, Sine theta What is it? Cos theta What is it? Tangent theta What is it? Sine Sine you should be looking at what ah? Uh? Sine is opposite. <laughs> yeah, sine is opposite. Cos is adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Eh? Yeah, there you go. So you must be very very comfortable using your sine and cosines lah. Okay, obviously, uh, theta is this small theta probably ah uh, this one this angle is 36.9 degrees and the bottom angle will be 90 minus 36.9 berapa jawapan so get our angles correct this is 53.1 degrees ha ayya this one also done so that's the thing lah this is 53.1 at the bottom 36.9 at the top so ah uh, yeah label all your forces 9 kilonewton is 9 kilonewton here this one is t t you don't know right this one, I don't know. This F, you also don't know. You can uh, make it, make your life easy. Why? It's harder to solve. Eh? Transfer. So when you transfer, make sure your angles are correct. So when you solve equilibrium here, which is uh, O, right? This is O. This one is O. You are solving uh, the equilibrium of one particular particle, which is here. And that particle is called O. You are doing uh, equilibrium of particle O. So next thing you should do is, yeah, transfer them. not transfer right this is called resolve the forces right resolve the forces so this one you have to resolve that with the two components 
same thing goes here resolve them into two components so that uh, it becomes more easily so next thing you do is that you should uh, solve for equilibrium so first things first is you should look at summation of forces in the x direction so this is summation fx is equal to zero next you should be looking at this one lah. not perfect ah. this one this one is actually summation fy equals zero kalau fy naik atas is positive kalau fx fx you're going to be looking at to the right is positive so that is what you should be doing lah. i suppose you should pause the video and try to solve on your own first okay pause the video and solve on your own all right semua orang dah solve sendiri so next we check your answer so you are going to be solving this one first summation fx is equal to zero which is this one right this one So, dia ada T cos 53.1. Ini duduk belah kanan kan? Ini belah kanan. Tolak F cos 36.9. F ni duduk belah kiri. So, that's why dia jadi negative. Equal 0. This one simplified. Once you have simplified, you're going to get first equation. And then you solve for summation Fy pula. Which is this one. This one. Summation Fy is equal to 0. Previously, you were doing this one. Summation Fx. So again, you have to remember. Ingat semua. Ada satu. Dua. Tiga. So don't miss out. Kena buat semua. 9 naik atas positive. So 9 positive. Tolak. Ah, ni oh. Ini negative. And this part is also negative. So simplify a bit. Your second equation will look something like this. 0.6f. So obviously, uh, nak tekan kalau kita tak boleh ni. This one is... You have to arrange properly first. So obviously this one is okay lah, right? but you, if you wanna, uh, if you want to solve using calculator, you have to arrange this properly. Kalau t ni dot depan, make sure t ni dot depan, and f ni dot belakang. Make it similar. And press your calculator. You should be getting these two answer. Okay. So don't make the mistake. <laughs> Solving everything is correct. And then press calculator salah pula kan. So make sure you are not making any mistakes. So this is another exercise. Mm. Next one. Let's do this one. Ah. Yeah, let's do this one. Obviously, there are answers, obviously, but no, don't. Don't uh, do this. Uh, don't look at answers first. You have to solve. What should you do? Solve on your own. Okay? Solve on your own. 
So how to to top this one? Ah, no need to to top lah. But yeah, you get the point. Solve one on your own. You've done, you've done a few exercises. Solve it on your own. So we might as well go to this one lah. This one. Let's do this one. This one looks nice and challenging. What is it? What does it want? Determine the magnitudes of the force C and T. Okay, that's easy. C tak tahu. T tak tahu. Dua benda tak tahu lah. So you've got uh, this nice little axis here. Now label. Of course, you're going to have this one lah. 16 kilonewton to the left. 8 kilonewton to the right. T. Okay, let's draw T. T is unknown. The angle is 40 degrees. 3 kilonewton boleh transfer pi bawah. So when you transfer, it's going to be like this lah. 3 kilonewton. What else? What else is missing? C. C kena transfer juga. So when you transfer, you're going to get here lah, C. Remember, you have to put your angles properly. So this angle is actually 20 degrees. Okay. So this is done. What else? If you are comfortable, you don't have to draw the next picture lah. Next picture would be something like this, right? Hmm. Maybe you are comfortable already. Huh? I can draw here. So there are two components for T. Obviously. Two components for T. And also, how should I draw this one? Huh? Blue color. Two components for C. It's 20 degrees. This is... Yeah. I gotta put back the angle. Huh? Angle here. 20 degrees. Ah, okay, now you can see. Huh? So you might as well label them. Huh? T cos 40. This one. T sin 40 lah kan. Apa lagi? How about this one? This one is... Hmm, you should be very good at this now. T sin 20. This one is... No arrow. Uh, dot, 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 dot. Uh. T cos... 20 degrees so now you've got a lot of things to do lah. obviously summation fx first is equal to 0 obviously lah. so the thing that you should be looking at when you're looking at summation fx is equal to 0 I've got to take a light color green eh? hmm Okay, ka. Is everything okay? Sometimes, ah, uh, if you don't want to make your life complicated, this T, ah, uh, I can really delete it already, ah. Uh. If I want to make my life less complicated, this one I can delete. Why? I have converted them into components. I can really delete them. This one also I delete. Ha, huh. tak ada lah complicated sangat. 20 degrees is a known effect lah. I'm going to remove this one. Uh, there you go. Obviously, T cost 20 degrees. I can put it somewhere more strategic lah. 
somewhere more strategic this one is T cos 20 degrees this thing is 3 kilo newton ah, there you go now it is strategic so solve this one first this one is actually summation fx how many components don't forget one two three four this is positive this is negative okay let's write yeah you don't even have to think about this anymore no need to look at the question anymore no need no need just look at your free body diagram okay look at your free body diagram so 8 plus t cos 40 degrees plus t sin 20 degrees habis lah tak habis lagi ni lah tu pergi ni kiri minus 16 equal 0 so that is what your equation should look like let's make it uh, more nice t cos 40 berapa cos 40 this one becomes 0 0.766 Alamak Sign 20 Sign 20 0 0.342 T Tolak 8 lah Sama kosong Ayah This one can solve already lah Tak ada C ke Oh no Big mistake Right Do you see the big mistake It's a huge mistake what mistake is that? It is the mistake of this one. Mistake. So sometimes it's very good to make mistakes, huh? Very good <laughs> to make mistakes. To make mistakes. Sometimes huh? during exercises it's very good to make mistakes huh? because you will remember. If you are uh, not making mistakes during exercises, you don't really remember. So you have to make mistakes lah during exercises so that you will remember. So same thing goes here. So there's a big mistake here. I believe some of you have caught it already. Yeah. Let us look. This one is actually not T. This one is actually C. This one is actually C. C. So this is actually C. Yeah, C. Let's write down properly. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. C. So it's a good idea uh, to use F. Uh, F1, F2, FA. F, uh, C. It's a good idea to good this, use this one. Uh. You, you tend to make less mistakes. Lah. Okay, let's continue. Zero point. This one is a C. Right, sine 20. Zero point three four two minus 8. Okay, your, your final equation will become. Zero point. Seven six six D plus 0 0.342 c equals 8 this is the equation uh. this is your equation number 1 how about your equation number 2 equation number 2 you guys should be looking at all the y components <coughs> this one Ah. 
<coughs> y component so summation f y equal zero anything going up is positive this one anything to the right is positive this what are these these are conventions that you create your own you can change but it's better to follow the standard convention lah. okay so you've got <coughs> t sine 40 degrees minus c cos 20 degrees right it's better to put fc something like that lah. but never mind lah c T sine 40, betul ya? Minus C cos 20 Minus 3 Equal 0 So T sine 40, how much? Sine 40 0 0.643 T Minus Cos 20 0 0.9396 point Nine three nine C okay equals three. I guess these two are the equation. So make sure uh T di ke depan okay T di ke depan C di ke belakang C di ke belakang. Now yeah use calculator okay so use your calculator <coughs> no need to solve manually don't waste your time this is equation number two so x is equivalent to t y from your calculator is equivalent to c this one is equal so punch your calculator Point seven six six point three four two Lapan point six four three minus point nine three nine three correct car what did you get? I am getting nine point zero nine kilonewton. Okay. 3.03 kN Betul ke tak ni check T Ya correct ah Betul So Done So how many questions have we done Are you guys good already We've done one This one ah Hmm how many questions have we done? One, two, three, four. Keep. Yeah, we've done some things, huh? A few things that we have done. I think two more could. Two more. Proceed. One more. Let's do one more. I guess you can do on your own. Lah. All right. So I believe you have done this on your own. So we can. I cannot clear this already. Let me clear this one for you guys. Okay. So I believe you've done this on your own. So from this uh, diagram. Convert it to something like this 8 kilonewton, 5 kilonewton F going up Yeah, Transfer Transfer makes your life easy This one 
transfer it makes your life easier so now you've got uh, all these forces remember when you are solving summation fx this is the one that you have to solve summation fx and uh, for summation fy you need to solve this one This one is for summation FY. Okay, so I believe you've done this. So look at this. Summation FX is equal to zero. Oh, terbuat X dulu lah. Dia ada 8, ada 5 cos 45, ada minus. And then arrange them properly. Dapat terus jawapan eh and then do summation fy f minus t ini semua negative lah ni this one negative this one negative this one to the left negative ok follow properly you can get the answer and how about the next question I believe the answer is here but yeah of course right like I have always repeat so many times try first do on your own we are learning engineering mechanics engineering mechanics so we're not learning history right history you can read history what else can you read huh? biology you can read maybe geography you can read engineering mechanics you cannot read lah you have to do exercise do exercise read also so yeah, you need to do some reading lah in the textbook but mainly you need to do exercise then you will really really understand it so that's the main thing that you should do when you're learning engineering mechanics which is doing exercise and a lot of them okay so converting all this into okay this one f2 is 6 kN makes your life easy already yeah apa benda yang tak tahunya F1 tak tahu eh hmm. F cos theta This one 5 sin theta This one is wrong I think F lah this one Am I right? Ya yeah, F sin theta This one is F sin theta So this one looks quite complicated lah So you gotta solve this one first this one is your summation fx is equal to zero ini semua positive ini semua negative so many components are involved so look at this one this is your summation fx is equal to zero put everything there every single thing Ini positive, positive, ini negative. Sebab apa dia duduk belah kiri lah. This one, negative. And then you got to look at uh, summation FY. Look at summation FY. <coughs> um, yeah, so atas positive, bawah negative. So you've got 5 sin 30, 6 cos 70 minus F sin theta minus 7, 3 over 5. So you're going to get, yeah, obviously this is your first equation, this is your second equation. So you got to solve it, <coughs> solving it, this is your first and second equation. Uh, yeah, this one, this one comes from here. 
ini cos theta bawa pergi bawah dapat f so f sama dengan ni kan so this one what do you do with this one ini plug in terus ke sini so when you plug in here you're going to get this one lah sin theta sama 0.352 And then you can use this identity lah. Tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. And then plug in again. You're going to get uh, tangent. So solve tangent theta tadi. You get this one lah. And you get this one. Again, I would like to stress. Do not read. Must do wah do exercise membebel aja eh. okey so do exercise okey alright so we are done on uh, 2d equilibrium of 2d how many slides have we gone through kind of a lot lah after this we're going to be learning uh, 3d alright see you guys